Good evening, hyperspinners. Today we're going to talk about the alpha version of hyperspin, hyperthene, and hyperHQ. So get ready. Hey everyone, it has been a while since I have done any sort of video on hyperspin, and my mic is a little dusty, but here we are. So there's been an open uh, alpha. Yes, test version of uh, Hyperspin 2 for over a year now, I'd say. A very small select uh, group of people that have been testing that out and uh, the development team is continuing to expand on it. And they're just about ready to open this up uh, to a beta version, uh, which would be open to everyone. I believe they're updating the Hyperspin site and if you've been in this uh, for a while, uh, when Hyperspin uh, 1 came out, uh, the servers couldn't really keep up. So uh, just suspect uh, the same sort of adventure uh, for Hyperspin 2's launch. Um, just be patient with that. So the intent of this video is to just kind of showcase some of the, the tools that, uh, that have been built out and you know they're not perfect, but man, they're pretty good. Uh, and they, you know, they're continuing to expand on the requirements that they've had from the people on the forums and just the, the team at large. They're doing some pretty cool stuff. So without further ado, I just want to kind of uh, start the install process, kind of tease the features that are in these tools and just kind of create a level set that there is progress that is happening. And, you know, it, it's been years. Uh, I mean, if you've been around the, the block here with Hyperspin for a while. So um, they've been quietly uh, building things out and um, let, let's just get into it because that's what you're here for anyway. So what I've got here is HyperHQ. Uh, you're gonna notice there are a number of apps that, uh, that are familiar in terms of the origin of what the purpose is for each one of these. HyperHQ is the initial setup of your systems. I'm going to go ahead and click this, and it'll walk me through the install progress or, or pro process as well as uh, set up the other things. So by default, it's looking at my C drive. I'm going to just select uh, another path here, just so it's a nice, clean install here. And I've just labeled it as Hyperspin 2. So what we're gonna to wanna to do though is put HyperHQ in its own folder. That's just out of preference for me. So I'm gonna type in HyperHQ. I'm gonna put a slash there as well. Then I'm gonna hit install. You're gonna notice a folder is gonna be generated and we're gonna open this sucker up. So uh, without further ado here, um, what we're gonna look at next is just all the features that are in there. I'm not gonna go through a whole tutorial, so let's go ahead and open that up. Finish. And here it comes. So HyperHQ, this is the setup of everything. Now on a brand new install, right? You're not gonna have any of these systems here, but I put a system on here just so you can kind of see um, what it's going to look like when you have some of the, these things set up. You can see that it's also installing some things and the box art uh, is installing as a whole. So anyway, um, so it's got a, a look and feel of uh, more modern uh, front ends. And this is again, uh, HyperHQ. So this is in a sense, your equivalence to Rocket Launcher as a whole. It's got a little more UI interface than Rocket Launcher, which is fine. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of explore what we've got on the left pane here, as well as describe some of these other things that uh, you might be seeing here. And then we'll go ahead and uh, set up one of these systems. So at the top here, this is your systems, this is your home, this is like all of the systems that you'd have set up. The collections, this is going to be like all of your Sonic games in one single place. Uh, next is your wheel manager, so this is managing, you know, what you're seeing and what's displaying and how you know in, in your order that you want it um, 
Next, we've got the emulators. So you can set up each individual emulator itself. You can add emulators. It, it will set things up for you by default as well. And then you've got the media. So as your, uh, how do we say this? As, as the community is building media and you are you know, downloading it, right? Um, you're able to select, you know, what would be like a, a recommendation, right? So, you know, you see applied there. Um, how do we say this? Um, this is just going to be your, your media management. Uh, you can, of course, uh, order the structure, uh, you know, the folder itself. But this is going to be your visual display of all the media that you've got here. Uh, I don't have a lot cooking here just because I'm trying to get this... Um, initial video uh, talk throughout and that's really the purpose here plugins you can see there's a couple defaults that you know we'll get into that uh, later but basically there are plugins just like other front ends as well as what you used to have with hyperspin one right you've got different uh, apps that you might be using these are essentially plugins uh, at the end of the day it's just this is more baked into the system at large so let's go ahead and uh, let's look at the settings next, just so you can see the, the breadth of things that are here. I'm not gonna read it all just because it, you know, it's self-explanatory. If, you know, if you can read, you've, you've got it here. Um, so the sounds, there you go. Paths, you've got intro and outro videos, really all the features that you have in Hyperspin 1. Uh, are, are really intact here. Uh, there are some apps that you use, like the marquee, um, you know, apps that you know allow that to function. That's all built in here, so no need for uh, additional apps. Uh, there's just a lot of selections here. Uh, LED Blinky makes a return. Uh, when it comes to controls, you've got you know the trackball controls, keyboard controllers. When it comes to updates, there's an auto updater, so that's a nice uh, add. You've got auto importers of, of you know, your, your games and such. You can kind of see that you know, behind the scenes, this is uh, downloading some media around uh, you know, the, the systems at large. Uh, you know, once you've gotten them all you know, downloaded, you know, you're, you're not getting extra downloads. It's pretty clippy. Uh, let's see what else here. So you've got different accounts. Uh, this is integrated with Emmy Movies. If you are setting this up for the first time, I believe this is going to take you to Emmy Movies to create an account as a whole. So what else do we have here? You know, we've got the systems uh, up, you know, here. You've got the years and then the number of players, right? Um, you know, I, I can launch this game, and, you know, with the play now. Here, I'll just kind of hover over what is in here. And again, this is not a full tutorial. This is just showing you the features that are in this alpha that is becoming a beta. I'm gonna go ahead and push the plus sign for the systems. And you can see there's different uh, systems here that we can select. I'm gonna go ahead and just select system here so you can kind of get a feel or the vibe, if you will, of what is here. So selecting a category, I'm gonna select uh, councils. So I'm gonna hit next. And then I'm going to click in the, the field there, and then I'm going to select one of these, uh, you know, options here. There's there's just so many. Um, it, it's pretty easy to set things up. I'm going to stick with the Sega uh, theme, I suppose. I'm going to select uh, Sega Genesis, and then I'm going to fill out the path here. Uh, and we're going to hit next. And then it's going to say, hey, are you going to do RetroArch or... Uh, you know, set up a emulator manually. I'm going to stick with RetroArch just here for the ease of setup here. And then it's going to ask you for what media you're going to want to download. So you can see there's quite a bit of selection here. I'm going to hit finish. And then I'm going to just kind of talk through this while it's uh, downloading all the media here. I'm going to get you a sense of how fast it, it is at the moment. I know they're working on uh, improving speeds as a whole, but overall it's pretty clippy as a whole. Um, so what, what, what to talk about here? So you, you can move these things around, you can edit. Um, it's, it's pretty intuitive, right? 
So this is HyperHQ. This is the setup of uh, the systems at large. Yeah, you might be asking, you know, where's Hyperspin as a whole, or where is um, uh, Hyperthene? Uh, it looks like it's actually hanging at the moment or something. Uh, but I'm going to showcase those um, as well. You know, don't fear, Hyperspin 1's look and feel is still there. Um, the, the one thing that, I, you know, just as, you know, a user as a whole, the only thing that I can think of here that, um, you know, that, that, that's not cross, um, you know, cross play here are the initial themes for Hyperspin 1. Uh, but with the theme builder and the work that they're doing, I, I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. There, there is going to be some rework but the work that it takes to build a theme is much quicker and more you know, uh, up to date with our current technology. So um, it's, it's gonna be awesome once you know, the community gets their hands on the theme builders and all the other tools. Uh, you know, the, the themes at large uh, for Hyperspin 1 will you know, live and die with Hyperspin 1 uh, unless there's a video theme uh, that makes things agnostic to front ends, of course. The big player with all that was uh, Flash is supported within uh, Hyperspin 1, which is really no longer supported, you know, in a, a modern, you know, uh, you know, the era, right? So that's really the main reasons, but I, I'm sure there's going to be communications about, you know, why, you know, maybe beyond the flash uh, issue with the themes at large. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, jump to Hyperspin or the Hyper Theme while this is downloading. This does look like it's hung here, but I'm going to uh, you know, mention this to the developers. Obviously they are uh, working through this, but that's the first time I've seen this thing hang. Um, could be my computer even, I, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video. I'm gonna um, get Hyper, or We'll do, yeah, we'll do Hyper Theme next. Uh, this is all online as a whole. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause that and uh, you know, mask the, the site until the developers are ready to uh, you know, display that site for everyone. I'm back, here is Hyper Theme. Uh, this is online and I am in full screen mode so you cannot see the URLs as a whole. You can see there's a number of people already making themes. You, can, you know, this is like your your home of all the themes at large, right? And you can uh, download these suckers and you know, nice and organized here. There's there's a lot going on, but we're not here to go through all that. That's going to be a future endeavor by someone else. Maybe me. I don't know. I I don't know. I'm doing all this the stuff for fun. So we're gonna hit create. And you can see here that there's a number of options to choose from to create. What we're going to do is focus on the theme itself. So we're going to select theme, and then you can see Hyperspin theme. Since we're talking about uh, systems, uh, you know, or maybe, maybe we should do a main menu. I don't know. Um, I'm not actually going to make a theme, but um, sure, we'll go through the system. But We'll select system theme. You can see there's a different number of options. That just depends on where you're going with all this. And we're gonna select, let's see, Sega, what did I use, CD? I think it was CD. And then you can enter you know, your information, you can enter tags, so the tags will help you find or have others find that information later. So I'm gonna hit save. And you're gonna see here is the canvas for hyper theme. Uh, what you can do is drag assets over the top of you know this pane here and then that allows you to have your selection of assets and then you drop them on the canvas here you can see the resolution here it's uh, vastly larger than the existing hyperspin one themes and that's part of the reason why hyperspin 2 needs their own set of themes right because it's an entirely different resolution You've got a couple things at the bottom here that um, that are familiar to you with the buttons, um, and you've got all the animations up at the right hand side. You can control the um, animations as a whole, and I'm not going to go through that as a tutorial. There's 
uh, a quick three minute tutorial uh, led by one of the developers that have done that. So once you've saved it right, you can save, publish, um, you know, everything's there, right? So Hyperspin, or sorry, Hyperthene is all bundled up online. It's really controlling um, the assets at large, organization, everything, right? So it's, it's gonna really streamline this process. I'm gonna go, go ahead and jump to Hyperspin. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video so I can uh, get out of the, the site here. All right, and we're back. So the folder that we are in, uh, well, we were in was the install folder. And I'm backing out of that. Again, I just placed that for uh, housekeeping, right? Uh, the folders that it made and the files that it made are down below. You can see Hyperspin is still there, you know, as you're used to. Um, so I'm going to go and double click Hyperspin. Um, the noises and such might blow my ears out, but I'm ready for it. So uh, I haven't done any setup with the media or anything like that. All I've done was the uh, systems that we were just talking about. Now, uh, yesterday I had set up Sega Genesis and I did not have any media there, right? So when I opened up Hyper, hyper uh, see there, I blow out my ears there. So then um, today when I opened it, the, you know, the Hyper HQ was downloading media, right? So this actually by default showed up. So, you know, same with the, same with the wheel icons. Um, so you can see Sega CD, I haven't done anything with that. But next time I open that, it's going to download that wheel art. You can see it's already downloaded, uh, you know, the theme at large. It just depends on how long you've had uh, Hyper HQ open so it downloads all the things. Kind of reminiscent to other front ends as a whole, right? It, it's scraping that data. But the point here is a repository that uh, has a default look, and then you can change that default look. Uh, so everything's, you know, Pretty much here, guys, uh, take it from me, I've uh, been using Hyperspin for quite a bit of time, and uh, there's not a lot missing here. Uh, the, the one thing is the themes, but you know, I'm, I'm getting over it. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have both builds um, you know, there, right, until I'm fully ready to transition to Hyperspin 2. Obviously, this is still in beta, it's moving to alpha, so those are the reasons why, right? So just wanted to let you guys know that this is actually happening and it's not just talk. I know you guys, uh, you know, even myself included think, hey, this is never gonna happen, right? But hey, it is. <laughs> so what we've talked about is Hyperspin 2, Hyperthene, and HyperHQ. Uh, probably more tutorials or announcements uh, are to come. I know they're planning on uh, updating the Hyperspin site. Um, they might even already have plastered uh, the, you know, the, the two logo that uh, they're, they're putting all over so the socials. So uh, until next time, guys, uh, we will talk soon.